Well, a good Friday afternoon to you. Dr. Steve G. Jones here, and today we are going to talk about self-hypnosis. We've already talked about the idea of putting someone under hypnosis, you know, the idea of the induction, the deepening, the script, amnesia, and trans termination. Today we're going to talk about how you can do that yourself. You know, it's nice to go to a hypnotherapist, it's nice to use hypnosis recordings, but what if you could do all that by yourself? So that's what we are going to be talking about today. Good Friday afternoon to you. If you're watching on Friday afternoon, it's about 4.30 p.m. Eastern Time, which would be about 1.30 p.m. Pacific Time. So if you're watching Friday and it's that time, then you're watching live. If not, then you're watching a, a replay. But uh, if you're watching live, I invite your questions and we're going to talk about self-hypnosis. How do you do it? Why do you do it? and uh, how do you do it the right way. So if you're just joining uh, for the first time, go ahead and subscribe. If you're watching this on Facebook, there should be a button up here, I believe. The format changes sometime, but, but you can, I believe it's up here. Uh, be notified of future broadcasts. And of course, go ahead and like and share this video. Let's check in and see who we have here today. We have Naomi, hello to you, Beth, and uh, she said she finally got here. All right. And Megilla, hello to you. Happy Friday to you too. Brenda, hello. And uh, Beth, hello. Cornelia, hello. Greetings from Germany. All right. Hello to you. Happy Friday, Ida says. All right. Doing great. Thank you, Ida. Sonia says, hello, Dr. Steve. Hello to you. Linda says, good evening from Sweden. All right. Good evening. Duca says, hello, Dr. Steve. Diane, hello, Steve from Australia. We've got quite the uh, international crowd here. And Miss Rowley, hello to you. Uh, Monica, hello to you. And if you feel like putting in your, uh, your country or state or what have you, feel free to go ahead and do that. Catherine, hello to you. Anki, hello. Michelle, hello. And uh, Miss Rowley reminding me, as always, not to talk so quickly because uh, if you're new to this, uh, sometimes I get so caught up in what I'm doing and I'm so passionate about it. And these broadcasts are happening during my work day when I'm, when I'm having meetings and, and creating new programs and I'm meeting with my team, so I'm really amped up. So I'm going to slow it down thanks to the... Uh, the, the uh, reminder from Ms. Rowley, thank you. You'll be happy to know that in my recordings, my audio programs that I create, I've created so many of them, uh, just fantastic programs, and I speak slowly. So you'll be happy to know that, Ms. Rowley, and others. So thank you for that. Uh, Natalie, hello. Christian, hello. And today we're talking about self-hypnosis. So I'm going to check in with a few more people, then we'll go ahead and get rolling here. Talking about self-hypnosis. What is it? How do you do it? How do you do it the right way? Christian, hello, I'm doing great. Uh, Georgina, hello, happy weekend to you. Yeah, we're beginning the weekend here. Uh, Angie, hello from South Carolina. All right, hello to you. Mariella, hello. Beth, hello, Wisconsin, the land of cheese. All right, there you go. Um, and then uh, I was watching a TV program recently where somebody was uh, live from Wisconsin, they actually had a, a plastic, I hope it was plastic, uh, wedge of cheese on their head. They were proud of being in Wisconsin. I've been to Wisconsin, very nice place, and uh, wonderful, wonderful relaxed people there. Uh, Lucine, hello to you from Belgium. All right, I've been to Belgium also. I've been to Bruges, and that was a, just a wonderful uh, place. Remind, reminded me of Savannah, Georgia with the horse horses and carriages and the ponds and, and the ducks and so forth. Christine, hello, doing great. Jahira, hello, from Pensacola Beach. All right, wonderful place, beautiful white sand there. I have uh, some relatives in that, in that area. Christy, hello. Cornelia, hello to you. All right, and uh, you can... Okay, Cornelia talking about getting relief from hypnosis. Excellent. Angelica, uh, Anna, bonjour to you. I'm imagining you're in France. And uh, Gabby says, I want to invite you invite you to Bavaria. All right. Well, thank you very much. Ms. Rolla, you're welcome for me speaking more slowly. A few more check-ins. Got a lot more check-ins today than usual. Let's see who else we have here before we get underway. Talking today about 
self-hypnosis, how you can do it. And hello from North Germany. All right, Marley, hello to you. Um, Lisa, we'll get to questions a little later. And uh, and uh, Beth talking about the, the cheese, the people with cheese in their heads. All right. And Anne, hello to you. Patty, hello from Wisconsin. Hello to you. All right, so we've got a wide uh, turnout here. Tamara, hello to you. Today we are talking, and the Longquist... Munoz, hello to you from Orange, California. All right, well, thank you for tuning in, everybody, from everywhere, surrounded by good people. It's a, it's a wonderful environment, so thank you all. Today we're talking about self-hypnosis, and Enid, hello to you. Talking about self-hypnosis, how do you do it? Why do you do it? How do you do it the right way? We're going to be covering those things today. So for those of you who are new to this, uh, the format is that I, when I do these educational type broadcasts, which is what I'm doing today, sometimes I'm on location and I'm filming a program and I kind of let you in or, or I'm at the beach where I'm getting inspired to write hypnosis scripts. And so I show you the beach and I interact and sometimes it's just pure questions and answers. So today, and that's a different format. The format for this, where I'm talking and educating you, is I talk a little bit, and then you guys can ask any questions you want, hopefully topic related. So today we're going to talk about self-hypnosis. Now, if you missed the broadcast about hypnosis in general, you can scroll back. If you're watching this on Facebook, you can scroll back through the last uh, couple weeks or so, and I talked about the five parts of a hypnosis session. And uh, the reason I want to follow up today with self-hypnosis is because I think a lot of people look at hypnosis and they say that, uh, well, I need someone else to do that for me because that's something that professionals do for me. And by and large, I agree with that. I mean, if you know, when I got on, I travel a lot uh, internationally and domestically here in the U.S., and I don't walk on the plane and say, I'll take it from here, guys. Everyone just have a seat. I don't, when I, when I have surgery, I've had my gallbladder removed. I didn't walk in and say, I got this. Just, just hand me the tools and I'll, I'll, I'll handle this. No, I, I'm not a pilot and I'm not a surgeon. So I, I have professionals do that for me. As, as when most of you fly, you probably have a professional do it on a commercial airliner and, Anytime you go into surgery, you, of course you have someone else do that. So why would it be any different with hypnotherapy? If you want hypnotherapy done for you, uh, the right way you go to a hypnotherapist. However, some people like to take more direct control, and I respect that, sort of like a pilot. You can become a pilot. You can fly your own airplane if you want. You don't have to use a commercial airliner. You can fly your own airplane. So in, with that in mind, we're going to talk about self-hypnosis today. What if you've taken all this stuff, all this information, and you're thinking, well, I'd rather do that myself. I'd like to, to do that myself, and I'd like to take control of it. Some people, some people like that. Some people, let's face it, some people look at hypnosis, and they say to themselves, and sometimes to others, and sometimes to me, they say, and other hypnotherapists, they say, I would never let anyone get in my mind like that. I would never let anyone take control of me like that. I like to maintain control. Okay, so those might be the same people who, who don't fly on an airline or, or who, who don't go uh, in for surgery. And, and I respect that. You know, there, there are some people who just, you know, they're, they're concerned about this and that. With hypnosis, I really, really understand it. I really do, because it's something that a lot of people just don't know a lot about. And so they, they hear about this idea, oh my goodness, someone's going to basically control my mind, is what they think, of course, that's not real, but if someone's going to control my mind and put thoughts in there, you know, that part's real, but the thoughts being put in there, the thoughts that you want in there, but, they, they get a lot of anxiety and concern about that. So for those who are not going to go to a hypnotherapist or who are not going to get a recording or for those who just want to have that extra control because you can go on a commercial airliner and you can be a private pilot, you can be your own pilot, so you do have the the option there. So for, for whatever camp you happen to be in, I'm going to teach you how to do self-hypnosis today. And 
the the way you want to do it I recommend is by using a recording now if you are just doing self-hypnosis and let's say you're you're putting yourself under hypnosis so let's say that I'm doing self-hypnosis right now which I'm not but I would say I would talk to myself in a monotone voice I would use my relaxing voice I would include the five parts of the session the induction deepening script amnesia and trance termination I would make it a complete session and let's say I'm doing it doing it on myself right now so I'm saying things to myself I'm closing my eyes and I'm saying things to myself such as I am relaxing I'm relaxing and walking on the beach and so forth what if at some point and this is very possible and those of you who have been to a hypnotherapist or listened to my hypnosis recordings or someone else's hypnosis recordings you may be aware that in a in a clinical type setting not a stage hypnosis setting that's that's legitimate by the way that is real but we're not talking about stage hypnosis we're not talking about street hypnosis which is also real we're not talking about any hypnosis where there's a, a crowd watching we're talking about the clinical version of hypnosis where it's just one-on-one -on -one and you want to change something have you you've probably noticed that sometimes you just kind of check out a lot of people do that they just kind of check out when I go to a hypnotherapist I have a lot of friends who are hypnotherapists so sometimes they hypnotize me we, you know we take turns and it's if we're working on something I check out hey they're the pilot during that time I'm not going to analyze you know when people hypnotize me they think I'm going to be analyzing it and picking it apart no I'm, it's kind of like a massage therapist going for a massage I'm not I'm not there to criticize I'm there to enjoy and relax and get benefit from it so I'm just going to check out put it in their hands they wouldn't be hypnotizing me if I didn't trust them so they're already trusted fly the plane do the work for me I'll be here relaxing but you may have noticed that you tend to check out at a certain point you may go unconscious now that's fine because the stages of sleep are no different than the stages of hypnosis so if you go down deeper you know alpha is the lightest state of hypnosis and the lightest state of quote-unquote sleep it's kind of like you can you can go into alpha pretty easily without even realizing it below that we have theta and delta I oftentimes when I'm being hypnotized I go to theta or delta I, I check out I'm, I'm in a deep I'm in a deeper state of sleep and I'm also therefore in a deeper state of hypnosis is that more effective than a lighter state of hypnosis I haven't seen any evidence about that common question I get but at any rate going back to me hypnotizing myself remember in our scenario I'm the hypnotherapist and I'm the patient because I'm hypnotizing myself in real time saying the words and now I've gone to that deeper state of theta or delta well what happens do I continue hypnotizing myself no because I am unconscious at that point and I'm not going to continue with my conscious plan of hypnotizing myself it's okay that I've fallen asleep because I'm still in hypnosis but it's really not okay that I'm in a situation where there's no hypnotist anymore the hypnotist has has gone away the hypnotist has left the building so it's really not okay that that situation is there and the reason it's not okay is because there's no hypnosis being done anymore and so because of that because of the fact that you may very well fall asleep when you're hypnotizing yourself live I recommend making a recording for yourself so you can wing it if you want you can lie in your bed and you can say now we're going into hypnosis and as long as you're you're trained in it as long as you know what you're doing then you can give it a shot the worst thing that's going to happen is you're going to fall asleep and wake up in the morning which is going to happen even if it works the way it's supposed to work because you'll fall asleep after it however at a certain point if you stop hypnotizing yourself you stop receiving hypnosis what if you fall asleep and you're listening to a recording that you've made earlier because you've prepared for this well then the recording keeps coming in although you're quote unquote asleep you're in theta or delta those are still hypnotic stages you're still receiving the information because your ears don't close your ears stay open so you may have noticed that you have eyelids but not earlids your ears stay open your hearing never sleeps that's why a mother can hear a baby 
when the baby's crying and she'll quote the mother will quote unquote wake up why is that it's because a part of her was never actually asleep and that is the part of her that monitors through hearing the environment and we all do that we know the baseline sounds that belong in our home refrigerator sounds okay that probably belongs uh, phone ringing in the background okay that probably belongs in a in a home or office situation depending on where we're falling asleep but let's put you back in the home situation okay so refrigerator belongs um, we've got uh, air conditioning okay that belongs um, occasional if, if we live in a, a place where there's thunder like on the East Coast thunder and lightning okay that belongs a window opening that doesn't belong a uh, you know someone you know something breaking that doesn't belong those things aren't supposed to happen so the reason that your hearing allows you to monitor the environment is for your safety and the safety of your offspring and the safety of those around you in your immediate community so because of that because it's built in your your hearing can also take in what it's receiving while you're being hypnotized so if you fall asleep and you've got a recording you're listening to my recording someone else's recording your recording you're still able to take in the information. You're still able to become, to, to be under hypnosis and receive the information. All right, so we're covering a lot of different questions here, which, which aren't actually being asked, but I'm covering a lot of potential questions that usually come up during this type of uh, an academic style uh, presentation. So to just get those out of the way in case anyone was wondering about that. So let's get back now to how you do it. So now we know that we want to make a recording that's the best way to do it if you want to just talk to yourself through it go ahead I don't think that's the best idea because I think you'll fall asleep and it'll and the hypnosis will just stop but go for it if you want to I don't advise it uh, there's no safety issue it's just it doesn't really make much sense to me so recording is the best way how do you make that recording how do you make a recording that you're going to be able to use to hypnotize yourself well first of all I do recommend that you get trained in hypnosis. I do recommend training at hypnosiscertified.com. That's a way to get trained so you'll know hypnosis. There are a lot of different training programs in hypnosis, a lot of different ways to get hypnosis, uh, hypnosis training uh, throughout the world, a lot of different wonderful organizations. My organization is the American Alliance of Hypnotists, so we certify anyone who gets hypnotized through, who gets uh, certified to hypnotize through me. But however you, get however you get certified to be a hypnotist is fine. But the way I do it, you have an induction, deepening, script, amnesia, trans termination, five parts. In the induction, and, and you'll want to go back and watch the videos on how to do this that are, that are in Facebook or, or any other resource that you may have. But I've posted some videos on the Facebook fan page that will uh, take you through that and they're numbered one through five so you can go through and watch them does that certify you as a hypnotist no it doesn't but at least gives you information that you can use in making your own recording for yourself and when you listen to your own recording you only listen to it I recommend at night when you're safe and, and you're stable you're you're lying on a bed so if you were to roll one, one way or the other you wouldn't roll out of bed uh, if you're going to sit in a chair which I don't recommend I recommend lying on the floor or on your bed makes sense or on a couch but if you're on a chair make sure it has arms on it so that if you were to lean one way or the other you won't fall out of it you want to look out for your safety but I say why not relax why not relax in your bed hey you're home alone or, or with the people who belong in your home why not just relax on your bed makes sense to me and why not listen to it at night because that's when you're used to going uh, to lie down and relax unless you have an opposite schedule but if you listen to it at the time when you're used to relaxing, it's going to be easier to relax because you're already anchored to relax. So they were taking advantage of another situation. You're anchored to relax in your bed because your bed, hopefully, unless you're throwing parties there or watching TV all night in your bed, hopefully your bed means sleep and relaxation. And you program yourself for that. So when you go to bed, that's time to go to sleep. So if you've done it that way, then you're all set. So listening to it in bed at night makes the most sense. So you'll start out by making the recording. You'll, you'll talk slowly and carefully. 
and you'll take yourself through the induction, which is a relaxing walk on the beach, a relaxing walk in the woods, then the deepening where you're watching the sunset or you're going down some stairs or down the side of a hill. The script where you will program yourself for the change you want using positive words, being precise. You know, if you want X amount of money in the bank, say it. If you if you want to travel to certain countries, name the countries. If you want to uh, be in a relationship by a certain date, name the date. If you, if you have solid dates and times and numbers, that always helps. Put them in there. Make them realistic. Now, I know a lot of people say, oh, let go of being realistic and just aim for the stars. But if you're new to this and you're not used to doing expansive growth and, and changing your, your, your mindset radically and making radical change in your life, if you're not used to that, then I suggest baby steps. You know, if you only have a thousand bucks in the bank, I think 10,000 would be a great goal, for example. If you have 10,000 in the bank, then 50,000 makes sense. So, you know, make it something that makes sense to you. Eventually, you will get to this place where these quantum leaps, these leaps that seem like they're over all of the intermediate steps make sense. But initially, Start with something that you're going to be able to stick to and it's going to make sense to you. So then you have the script where you're programming yourself, then amnesia, where you tell yourself essentially that you're going to uh, not remember the program that you've done during the hypnosis session, probably will to, to a large degree anyway because you've recorded it, but you want to attempt to scramble that conscious recollection. And then after you do amnesia, trans termination, I suggest that you tell yourself to drift off to sleep and wake up in the morning and use the recording at night. So now you know the reasoning behind uh, self-hypnosis. Some people like it because they want control uh, and I recommend doing a recording rather than doing it uh, live for yourself. And I do recommend that you study it before really going into it. Hypnosiscertified.com is is a resource for you. There are many other resources. All right, so now let's go ahead and open it to questions. I think a lot of questions came in while I was while I was uh, telling you about self-hypnosis, what it is, how you do it, and if you want more details, of course, look for those videos on Facebook uh, with me, Dr. Steve G. Jones, the uh, the five parts of the, the, of the hypnosis session. I've numbered them so you can find them easily. One of five, two of five, three of five, etc. All right, let's scroll back a little bit because I think we, we've had some, a uh, lot of activity here for uh, while I was talking. So I'll scroll back to a certain point. If you asked a question and I, don't, and, I, and I don't see it now, please post it again because now is the time where for the next 10 minutes or so, I will be glad to answer your questions. Uh, Luisa says, hello from Italy. Hello to you. Uh, do I do hypnosis? via Skype. Yes, I do do that and I, I strongly recommend it. A lot of therapists are, are getting into that. I mean, we're, we're beyond Skype now. A lot of, There are apps for, for this type of thing. A lot of mainstream therapists, medical doctors are offering uh, advice. You, you can, let's say you have something that broke out on your skin and you're thinking, what in the world is that? You take a picture of it and you send it to a medical doctor and they can diagnose it. So we've gone a long way. Uh, but yes, you'll be happy to know that I've been doing hypnosis through Skype for, I'd say about the last 10 years now. And uh, it's uh, it's not necessary to have to have Skype. It's not necessary to have full video. You can easily do it th uh, through the phone also. Um, let's see, Miranda, hello to you, Jahira. Um, I love self-hypnosis. Thank you. So worth it. You're welcome. Lucine says, yes, sounds good to me. Glenn says, following. All right. And if you're just joining, go ahead and click. I believe the link is up here so you can get notified when I come on again because some people just don't, don't know when I'll be on. Usually, I strive for Monday, Wednesday, and Friday approximately 3 p.m. East Coast time, which would be approximately noon West Coast time. But as is the case today, uh, lots of lots of meetings today, lots of travel coming up for me, so lots of arrangements to make, and uh, lots of uh, programs that I'll be working on in the next couple months. So, a lot of a uh, lot of meetings, uh, 
happen today, which which is great, but sometimes that bumps this out a little bit time-wise. Precious says, it doesn't work for me. My mind idles. Okay, not it's not for everyone. Carmen says, hello, Dr. Steve. Hello to you. Joe has joined. Hello. Miss Rowley says, you are awesome. I can listen every night. My MP3, I call Steve. Ha ha. All right, great. So um, I'm guessing that you mean the uh, uh, hypnosis recording that I created. By the way, if you want to check those out, we do have a new website for that, hypnosisbystevegjones.com. And uh, Katerina says, can hypnosis, in, can hypnosis in English can help me, although I am not a natural English speaker, does it work? As long as you understand all of the words being used. I mean, uh, Katerina, if you have a basic understanding of English, meaning you understand the words that would be used in a hypnosis recording, then yes. My hypnosis recordings, I keep them just like my books. I keep them at an, an eighth grade level. Uh, when I'm con when I'm conveying information, I, I don't talk uh, in a level beyond that because I'm not trying to confuse anyone. I'm not trying to show off that I you know I've been educated through Harvard or that I have a doctorate. I'm not uh, attempting to convey any of those uh, you know egotistical type things when I'm making a recording. I'm my job is to get the job done. So I'm using uh, what what would be considered eighth grade uh, communication, which is great. And I think any book should be written in that because really, if you understand a topic, then you're able to talk without a bunch of jargon. So anytime I'm communicating with people or, or writing a book or creating a program, I'm using very straightforward communication, very straightforward words in English. So as long as it's done like that, and as long as you do have an understanding of the, base, of the basics of English, meaning you can hold a conversation, you understand all of the, the, the normal common words, then you, then you will be fine, Katerina. If you don't, then I don't suggest um, English. I have recordings in, in all the top five languages languages of the world for that reason. Um, Lucine says, when self-hypnosis goes wrong, those people come to you, <laughs> right? When self-hypnosis goes wrong, absolutely. I had a friend who, uh, uh, he's a, a good friend of mine. He's, um, we've stayed in touch over the, over, uh, oh goodness, I guess about over the past 15 years. Uh, he has, He's a, a dentist in Beverly Hills, and uh, my office used to be right down the hall from his office, and we became friends because I always wore hats every day. I wore a, a hat, and he'd always comment on my hats, and eventually we became friends, and we hang out, and he uh, he's just a, a wonderful guy, and uh, he uh, does root canals, and he does them a lot of times for people who have gone to another person who did it and didn't do it right. So I think uh, Paul, Paul Ansey is his name. He's uh, from South Africa originally. I highly recommend him. Paul Ansey in Beverly Hills. I believe he's still in the Roxbury Medical Building where I was practicing also. We were, we were practicing there at the same time. Uh, I was there around year 2000 to about the year 2004 in the Roxbury Medical Building, but but he gets people who, uh, you know, they, they've kind of messed, they, they've gotten messed up, unfortunately, and he fixes stuff. So um, I haven't seen much of that. I, I've seen a lot of hypnotherapists uh, do do a great job, actually. But uh, yeah, I guess if, hypno, if uh, self-hypnosis did go, did go wrong, I could, uh, I could definitely help them. So thanks <laughs> for triggering that memory for me, uh, Lucine, my, my friend Paul. Uh, Prozik says, I'm realistic, expect miracles. I like that. Kathy says, I use your recordings with headphones at night. Good stuff. Sonia says, how is it possible to do hypnosis via Skype? Just like this, except I would say you're going into hypnosis. Uh, hypnosis doesn't require me to, to, to touch anyone. It just, it's just words. So I could do it I could do it right now if I, if I wanted to. So that, that's how you do it. Just stand and deliver, just like everything else in life. Lundquist Munoz says, Dear Steve, I've just used your out-of-body experience recordings with great success and wanted to thank you. All right, well, thank you for mentioning that. Michelle says, Steve, not sure if this is a form of self-hypnosis. There was a time when I had persistent joint pain in my foot, and for some reason I felt the compulsion to gently brush my hand over the affected area. Then I experienced a coldness over that part, 
and the pain disappeared and has never returned since. Could be self-hypnosis. When we get into physiological things like that, there could be a perfectly logical uh, medical organic reason for that. I don't know, but I appreciate you mentioning that. Ida says, have a great weekend. All right, you too. Ursula says, all right, Ursula says, hi. Jeff says, I'm working through hypnosis certification program. In the pre-talk, that's the talk we give someone before we hypnotize them. We want to educate them about hypnosis. Tell them what they're, what they're in for. Tell them what's going to happen. Put them at ease. Answer any of their questions. That's what Jeff's talking about when he says the pre-talk. That's something that you learn in a certification program. So uh, Jeff again says, I'm working through hypnosis certification program. In the pre-talk, is it a good thing to tell the client that eventually they will understand enough to practice self-hypnosis? Not sure if I should include this in the pre-talk. No, I, I wouldn't, Jeff. There's really no need to because it's sort of like when you go on a commercial airliner. You know, the pilot doesn't say, hey, someday you'll be flying this plane because if they're like me, I, I don't want to fly the plane. I don't want to do my own surgery. I don't want to fly the plane. I'm, I, I'm working on doing less, not more. I want to focus on the things that I do and do well, like this, creating programs, creating hypnosis recordings, um, meeting with people, figuring out how I can promote hypnosis, how I can help people understand their subconscious minds. I don't want to ever learn how to fly that plane. So. I think that's the case with most people who will come to you as clients, Jeff. I think that they, they could care less about doing self-hypnosis. Uh, it's also not necessary. And uh, so I would I just wouldn't mention that, Jeff. Good question, though. Thank you for that. Ms. Rowley says, have a great weekend, Steve. Thank you very much. Time for one or two more questions if you've got them. Christian says, I need a recording on cancer, chemo pain. All right, you can Google that. Um, check out uh, the, the various websites I have for that. I do have... I do have a recording for that, uh, so go ahead and absolutely look into that. And I'm, I'm again, uh, Christian. I'm, uh, my heart is uh, with you on on dealing with what you're dealing with. Anna says it was good to see you. Take care. All right, you too. Miss Rowley says Skype also fake Steve G Jones. Okay, so what Miss Rowley is talking about is a lot of people take my name, create fake accounts. They lure people into giving them money. They lure people into getting on Skype with them. I was contacted by a private investigator about this. My understanding is the FBI has been looking into this. So, so yeah, there, there are a lot of, uh, I looked the other day, I did a search on just to see how prevalent this was uh, for Steve G. Jones on Facebook, found a lot of fake accounts. Uh, Facebook now has gotten better at finding them, so they bring to my attention about five fake accounts a day using my pictures, using my name, using both, using one or one or the other. Uh, it's really gotten out of hand. Facebook is working on fixing that, but uh, yeah, what can I tell you? We live in a in an interesting world. Um, Gabby says, "Thank you. I wish you beautiful Woken. Oh, oh." Wokenenda, Wokenenda, Wokenenda. I took one semester of uh, German in college, so I wish you a beautiful Wokenenda too, Gabby. Thank you very much. Sonia says, agree with Miss Rowley. All right. Lucine says, you're welcome, Dr. Steve. And yes, mean I was follow that. You said self-hypnosis. All right. And McGillis says, I listen to your recordings at night and about five to ten uh, minutes, I am asleep. Excellent. I wake up early the next morning feeling refreshed. I switch between several. I love them and they really have helped me. Excellent, that's exactly how you should be using them. Let them put you to sleep. You do not need to stay awake. The only thing you have to gain during by staying awake is to, well, first of all, lose out on sleep. Second of all, analyze what I'm saying, and we don't really want that because I want your subconscious mind to accept it and your conscious mind not to worry about it. Think about if you went to the cockpit when an, air, when an airplane was flying and you said, hey, guys, what's going on in here? Oh, I don't know if I agree with that decision to press that button to go around that cloud. Why don't we do, why don't we do this instead? You know, you would be kicked out. <laughs> they wouldn't want you there. You wouldn't be accomplishing anything good there. The pilots know what they're doing. Same concept. Check out, go to sleep, let the hypnotist take it from there when you're listening to a recording. So thank you for sharing that, Amigilla. We have time for one more question, a little bit over. I've got to get back to back to meetings and making recordings. And Friday for me is also a gym day, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. I'm 
working out and I encourage you to exercise regularly as well. Jason says, thank you for your time today with us, Steve. My pleasure. If I can't watch live, I'll watch recordings. Excellent. Hasham says, Steve, is there anything that can go wrong in self-hypnosis? Not too wrong. I mean, you're not going to go into a coma or anything like that. Um, I, you know, there, there are things that, that could potentially not work out very well, but uh, as far as something going drastically wrong you you're really just using words and you're lying down and especially if you're if you're doing it yourself so uh, no, nothing uh nothing shockingly dangerous that you need to be aware of Ashan thank you for your question though um okay Sonia says can you tell me if do you any think about an ongoing followers visitation in Manchester on 10th and 11th of August hmm didn't really understand that completely. Um, I think you're asking if I'll be in Manchester on August 10th and 11th, and the answer is no. Uh, I was just reviewing my schedule for the next two weeks today, and of of all the places I will be, I will not be outside of the U.S. So if that's what you're asking, the answer would be no. Let's take one more question. Uh, Let's see, I think we have a hypnosis question here. Okay, Keith says, when you record self-hypnosis recordings and listen to it at night, do you think that it is less effective because your subconscious knows that it is you who are speaking? Great question. Should you have someone else read the script? You know, that's, that's a good question. I'm recommending that you uh, make your own recording if you want to. If you want to have someone else do it, Keith, you really, you know, I, I have mixed thoughts on that, Keith, because uh, on the one hand, you're really getting far removed from the expert. So, so here, here's the scenario you've set up, Keith. So you've learned from something how to do hypnosis. You've learned it. And then you're having someone else do it. You're having a, a friend do it. Here, friend, make this recording. Uh, you know, if you tell them word for word what to do and they stick to the script, that eliminates them changing anything. Um, if they go off script and start making up stuff, who knows what they're making up. So ideally, Keith, if you have a friend who's a hypnotherapist, that would be the best. If not, then just to minimize, you know that game where you, you sit in a circle and one person tells something to the person next to them? And they tell the person next to them, by the, by the time it finally gets back to the original person, it's completely different. That's the, the chain of events you're, you're kind of entering into there, Keith. So if you have someone, you've created the script, you've gotten the information from the source, you've created a script based on that for yourself, and you have them read it word for word, Keith, I think that's fine. You, you've minimized the, uh, the chances of something being off target. Uh, still not perfect because you're obviously you know if you're not a hypnotherapist you may be but if the person is not a hypnotherapist then um, you may be off target a little bit but I, I doubt there'll be any damage done by that um, it may just not be as powerful as it could be with the hypnotherapist but having someone so my answer is fine do it ideally they'd be a hypnotherapist if not make sure they read uh, your script word for word when you do it um, and then the the situation that Keith is asking about is, you know, wouldn't it be strange if you're listening to your hypnosis recording at night and it's your voice? And, and yeah, it could be if you're not used to that. First time I heard my recorded voice, I was, I must have been, a, I think, six years old. My mom had passed away and my dad bought me a recorder and I started recording right away. And I, I didn't recognize the voice because your voice, if you never listen to it recorded, it sounds different than the way you normally encounter it. The way you normally hear your voice, you're listening from the inside. When you're listening from the outside, like a third person perspective, it sounds different because the sound is channeled differently. So it can be if you're not used to listening to your voice or if you tend to be critical of yourself, yeah, Keith, that could potentially work against you in which case it would be good to get another person. There are even these programs that'll read it for you. I mean, sometimes they sound a little computerish, you know, like you are now going into hypnosis, you know, it may sound kind of like that, but that may actually help, help you not analyze it because it's not your voice. So great question there, Keith, for those not used to listening to their own voices. 
it might be better to get someone else to do it or to have a um, one of those uh, it would be instead of voice to text it would be text to voice recordings I would just listen to it make sure it's not changing any words because I've heard some real butchering in those things where it takes a word and it changes it and remember your subconscious mind doesn't have the ability to figure that out so if you say a word that if the program says a word that's actually pronounced differently uh, your subconscious mind is not going to be able to distinguish it it's not going to be able to say oh yeah what they meant to say was this it's just going to take it literally and if it's changing it to a word that actually means something different then that's not good so you're going to have to check it with a fine-tooth comb Great question, Keith. Got us into a lot of extra territory there. I appreciate you opening that door. All right. So I've been on here for 40 minutes. It is time for me to get back to work creating programs that help you change your life, live better, and move forward. I'm Dr. Steve G. Jones, hoping you have an outstanding day.